Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on Arrow Season 7 and this is going to be my review for Episode 2 of this season, otherwise entitled The Longbow Hunters. But of course, before we get into the rest of the video, if you've not watched the episode, go watch it. Come back to this video later on because I'm going to be talking spoilers, obviously. So, yeah. But if you are continuing on the video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like on the video to show your support for Arrow for the hype around this season. And um, yeah, if you just want to show your support, I guess. And obviously, let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on this episode. Intrigued to you know, hear what everyone had to think about certain parts of this episode, which we will jump into in this video. So yeah, just leave all those opinions down there. And of course, if you are new to the channel and uh, want to follow all the Arrow stuff for this season, make sure to subscribe. So last episode, we had the big uh, follow-on from the end of last season, as you would expect, where we saw Oliver in prison, how he's dealing with all that daily life and stuff. But I guess uh, the big thing was the flash forwards. I don't think anyone was expecting that. And obviously, we were all hoping that we'd get some of that this episode. And we did, and we will jump into that at certain points. But I think last episode was basically the best premiere. Well, it was the best premiere so far. Haven't watched Legends today, so don't, you know, Legends could blight out of the water if it wants to, or if it decides to. But I really, really enjoyed the Arrow premiere. And going by a lot of other people's opinions, so did everyone else. But we do start the episode with seeing Oliver in solitary confinement, which I think we all thought would happen. Obviously, we didn't see, like, it drawn out because it would be pretty boring. Oliver in a box by himself. I don't think anyone wants to watch that. Him doing push-ups, but he's been there for a certain amount of days. I think they said two or five days. It was two or five, I think. Might have been seven. Could have been 20 years. Who knows? But he's in solitary confinement for what he did at the end of last episode, which makes sense. Now, we do see, like, Stanley just, like, waiting for Oliver now. At the end, like, after last episode, we saw, like, Stanley was, like, weak and got beaten up. But a lot of people do think that something is actually up with Stanley. Um, we don't really get too much of a hint of that in this episode. Uh, but a lot of people do think that maybe Stanley's working for someone on the outside. That might not be Diaz. That could be someone completely different. Maybe the complete big bad for this season. Uh, but a lot of people are, have, like, a big uh, question mark around Stanley and whether he's a bit suspect or not. But if you... Do you think Stanley's got something up with him? Do you, do you think Stanley is actually... Uh, you know, trustworthy, let me know in the comments because I think what we're seeing at the moment, he, he is representing himself pretty good as just a person that wants protection in prison. But, you know, you know, under all of that, there could be someone that's actually just, you know, worked in there. And it doesn't make, it doesn't, it doesn't um, come as too much of a surprise that he's just, he's new in prison. He wasn't in there when Oliver was first in there. Like he's new into prison and just could be like an undercover person uh, within there. But level two is referenced and he's, it's like meant to be much worse than what they're dealing with at the moment. Now there is an episode coming up this season called level two. I think it's either, I don't know what episode it is to be completely honest, but there is an episode called level two. It might be next episode. It could be the episode after, but obviously there's going to be an episode reference, uh, will set around that level two or whatever it is, which you have to think is like the more maximum security prison, uh, side of slab side. So, um, yeah. Just thought I'd mention that it was referenced. But in regards to the first part of the flash forwards, which we'll jump into the second part later on, but the first part, we do find out that William is actually gay. So the reason that I'm mentioning this and that it's important, that whole the whole like William is gay thing, is because a few like months back, they were casting a like blue beetle type character who was like a billionaire, created all of this like magnetic levitation tech and stuff. That's future William. Now I did mention that I think in an Arrow video, or yeah, I think I mentioned that in an Arrow video over the weekend that I think the future William was that character that they were casting that really fit the description of like a blue beetle type character. So um, yeah, that's William and yeah. But he does say that Felicity and Oliver left him. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that like in present day, we just saw that Felicity and Oliver leave him. This could be like later on this season or something like that, or it could be when he's like 21 years old or something like that. But he does he reference that Felicity and Oliver have left him. But the hose that he has that Felicity gave him is actually a GPS, which is how he was led to Leanne Yu. And it's it's sort of like a painful thing coming back there because that's where his actual mother died. So it's sort of like a hard thing for him to deal with. But as the episode title sort of suggests, it's called, it's called Lo The Longbow Hunters. So who are we going to meet in this episode? That's right, The Longbow Hunters, consisting of Silencer, Kodiak, and Red Dart. And they steal this, like, uh, this mega battery sort of thing. Um... Yeah, it looked like a battery, I guess. But essentially, we find out later on that this mega battery is like, you know, just one piece of, of a puzzle that can basically, like an energy sort of weapon that can just wipe out a complete city. So, um, yeah, pretty important that they get it back. 
But essentially, like, Oliver's story in prison for this episode was trying to be mates with Brick. Trying to get some stuff to help him deal with Diaz on the outside whilst he is in prison. So, um, yeah, I think we all knew that Oliver was going to have to try and be somewhat friendly with people that he didn't want to be friendly, uh, friendly with in prison. And we saw that play at this episode. And uh, we'll jump into it later on, I guess, in regards to how he goes about it. Um, but yeah, I thought it was pretty good. In regards to outside of prison, uh, obviously we saw like Felicity sort of basically and the others like with Renee and Curtis sort of going against Argus. Now in that, in that scenario where they are like caught by Argus, they are in the wrong. Like they're not in the right, they are in the wrong. However, the thing to bring up is that Felicity with her motives is correct. Felicity in this episode was like sort of like 50-50. Like she was part like really stupid, but then part like really smart because... Well, smart, oh no, well, her motives were correct. Like, I don't, you can't debate and go against her motives because her motives were that she wants to take down Diaz because Oliver went to prison. He sacrificed himself to give others immunity and all of that and just basically put himself in prison to take down Diaz. But Diaz is free and arguably doing even worse stuff or at least trying to do worse stuff with a pretty lethal bunch of people in the Longbow Hunters. So what Felicity's trying to do is completely correct. You can't argue against that. But her motives... And I said this in my Discord while, while we're watching the episode, I thought we were like extremely stupid. Like she was just putting other people's lives on the line when really Felicity has been like methodical in a lot of the things that she's done in the past. So wouldn't she do that in this scenario? Like there's no, I guess you could argue there is a real rush because she might be thinking that Oliver's going to get, you know, killed in prison or something like that. But she should have faith like, yo, he's the green arrow. He should be able to survive and put himself... Uh, in a good space to at least survive a decent amount of time in prison. So with Felicity, there was a bit of a, a bit of a flaw with her this episode in regards to just how she went about things. But the the reason as to why she was doing them, I thought were completely right. But essentially, in regards to Oliver in prison and basically trying to be mates with Brick, essentially that guard, uh, Peter York, I think York was his last name. I think it's Peter York. Uh, Brick isn't a fan of him, doesn't like him at all, and, I, and as we said in episode one, seemed like a bit of a dick. The, the guard seemed like a bit of a dick, but what prison guard like doesn't seem like a bit of a dick? But anyway, so Brick just wants him out of there, and that's basically all of his jobs. Like, if you get him out there, I'll help you. So I think we all knew at some point in this episode, Oliver was going to succeed, because that just seemed like this was going to be like this episode's storyline in regards to the prison stuff. Um, but we'll get into like the culmination of all of that later on. But I thought it was... Like, uh, Oliver, like, make the little knickknacks and stuff, like the little pencil shooter to, like, uh, make a distraction so they could get away to the library and stuff was pretty interesting. Bit of a question mark as to why the computers in the library would have at least decent enough internet where they could look up that information fairly quickly. Like, honestly, if I'm thinking about prison internet, I'm thinking, like, 1990s dial-up speed, to be completely honest. But, um, yeah, like, there's just, you know, TV believability Things have to happen fast to just make things flow well on TV. So we'll give it a pass in regards to that. Now, Laurel Lance in this episode, there was like complaints that last week she didn't, didn't have enough screen time, but I don't think she was necessarily like needed last episode. I think what she provided last week in, in episode one was enough. She just needed to say like, oh, DA job and, and announcement. That's all that she really needed to do last episode. This episode though, I thought she had a really cool role and she is like straight up Black Canary in this episode and i'm pretty sure they're just going for that this season like she looks like black canary she's dressed up like leather jacket boots all of that and, and uh from what i've heard basically diner's just going to be police captain and really going to have like no role as her like black canary role from last season and the season before so they are changing up diner a lot uh and it, it just seems like they are shifting laurel into being very 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 much like that earth one laurel that we saw from seasons one to four um, and that doesn't come as too much a surprise, um, but you have to wait and see how that goes in episodes to come. But I thought the apology between Laurel and Dinah was great. I thought it was very emotional, and I think it's something that needed to happen because I don't think they could really keep going this season with them being back and forth and going like, meh, meh, meh. they couldn't do that. They had to like resolve that uh, fairly early on. Now, not like a complete resolution, but at least a massive step forward in regards to that. So they could still have some doubts between each other. Uh, in episodes to come, but I think they really just needed to nail that early on and just m move on with it for the most part. So I thought they did a good job in regards to that in this episode. Now, the whole fight scene involving the Longbow Hunters and Ricardo Diaz, I thought was pretty cool. Like all the train stuff with Kodiak and Long and uh, Red Dart as well. But the coolest thing was probably the silencer scene. And we did get a hint of her earlier on the episode when the Longbow Hunters actually steal the battery. 
But the silence the scene between Laurel and then later on Dinah, I thought was really cool. Now, some people were asking about like what's going on with Silencer. In the comic, she has like she can manipulate silence, so she can, can create like zones around her that are completely silent. Uh, obviously, she has that little device on the show, and but in the in the comics, uh, certain things can stress that zone, whether she makes it too big or other factors can affect it as well. And in the case of this episode, it was the two canary cries or the two sonic cries, if you want to call them, that affected that silence zone. So for the most part, it's really really overpowered. But when there's enough stress on it, it can be defeated. So it's not just this completely overpowered thing. Like, it, it would be too overpowered, to be completely honest, if uh, those two, like, sonic cries that literally melt brains and stuff like that couldn't um, affect that zone. So I thought having the two affect it was a smart decision. Uh, but by itself, it's still pretty overpowered. But we go back to the flash forwards for the last scene of this episode in regards to the flash forwards and Roy and William find Oliver's bow. And it's the bow from like, it's like a, one of the newer bows from last season. I think it's the same bow that the fake green arrow is using, um, which was pretty interesting. Like, I think that was a big question mark. So Oliver's going to go back to Leanne Yu, or at least someone's going to take his bow back and bury it. But there's a message there. We don't read what the message, we don't get to hear what the message says. Uh... Roy burns it, but we do find out that whatever it entails is going to cause them to go back to Star City. So we are going back to Star City in the flash, in the flash forwards. I'm going to call, I keep calling them like future flashbacks by accident, but we're going back to Star City in the flash forwards. Uh, hopefully next episode, you know, they could take a break with the flash forwards in regards to episodes and maybe that next episode we might not have any, but you would think they would still put like one or two in each episode, which I think is necessary. I think that's what a lot of people would want. So I'm intrigued as hell to see what happens in regards to that. Uh, the flash forwards for me are the most hyped things about the episode. I am really loving present day, especially the prison stuff, but the flash forwards are so intriguing because with the flashbacks, they weren't that interesting because it's like, oh, we know what happens in present day. But with the flash forwards, we don't know what's going to happen between now and then. Like who dies? Who survives? Does Oliver become the flash? Well, the Elseworlds crossover he does. But anyway, you know, so many things can happen from now until that future point that it's so intriguing. And we sort of want to know what happened uh, to Roy, what led him to become, uh, go into Lian Yu, all of that. It's so intriguing. And just due to that, I just want more flash forwards, but I don't want them to smother the episodes with it. Because in this episode, we've got three scenes there, which I thought was good, uh, which is pretty small because in comparison to previous seasons with the flashbacks, We'd have like five or six or something in an episode. So they're really keeping it to a minimum in these episodes, but there's a lot of content there and it still, get, it still gets you thinking. So, you know, it's just great, the flash forwards, and I can't wait to see more of them. But essentially the culmination of the whole prison story for this episode is that Oliver, you know, he's he's always stuck in that dilemma. He's like, am I going to kill this dude? Or how am I, like the guy wouldn't listen to him. Like the he was too stubborn, the prison guard, which I guess I can understand. Uh, but it's not like he's dealing with like some mass murdering serial killer or something. He's dealing with the guy who's protecting Star City for God knows how many years. So the guy was a bit silly in regards to just not, maybe not listening. But Oliver just stabs himself and says that the guard did it. Which I think was like the logical conclusion if the... Because he didn't want to kill him. Oliver's not going to kill someone. Especially a guy with a wife and, uh, and child as well. I don't think Oliver's going to do that. Um, so the way in which he went about it I thought was the right way. It's just cause some pain on himself. Some physical pain. Uh, just so he can get what he wants to do some stuff on the outside. Like, sure, it's going to ruin that guy's career, most likely, but it's th better than killing him, you know what I mean? And leaving a widow and a child uh, without his dad. So I think that's the better option. I think Oliver took the most logical uh, route. But then we see that Felicity is actually going to team up with Samantha Watson. She's teaming up with the FBI because, you know, she's got to find someone that wants the same goal as her. Argus isn't, you know, specifically targeting Diaz. They're looking for some other stuff. So Felicity's got to team up with someone that wants to take down Diaz. And who's that? Agent Watson, the FBI. They want to do it. So, um, yeah, we're going to be seeing that. Probably, I don't know how many episodes we'll see that storyline with them teaming up for. Uh, obviously, next episode specifically. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to really have a guess in regards to an actual episode total. I'd say maybe two or three. I wouldn't expect, expect too many. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see the way they go about that and uh, who else gets involved as well. But overall, I thought this is actually a really strong episode. As I said, the flash forwards are the most interesting part, but I thought the prison storyline was good. Uh, my only real issue, I think, with the episode was just the way the Felicity maybe went about things. But I don't know if it was just because they wanted to write it so Felicity was just at one extreme, just so 
Um, it drove her to go into the FBI and teaming up with Agent Watson. It's sort of confusing to tell what they're necessarily going for. Her motive's completely correct. You can't argue against them. As I said, it's just her actions were just borderline extremely stupid. So that was my only like real like head scratching. Uh, why did they do that moment for this episode? I thought the longbow hunters were cool. A bit of a question mark maybe on Ricardo Diaz's fighting skills because he keeps losing to like, who did he lose to? He didn't lose to Felicity, I guess, but he lost to like Diggle. But then like he's like matching Oliver and all that. He's meant to be like a good fighter. So it's a bit confusing in regards to that. Let's just put like a asterisk there saying maybe he's slightly injured or something like that. Maybe he's on some painkillers or something. I don't know. But yeah, Arrow keeps going strong this season. I know we're only two episodes in, but you know, I'm really, really excited to see what they do for this season. And I'm just looking forward to the certain things that they're setting up. And I cannot wait to get to future Star City hopefully next episode. But thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it show support. Let me know in the comment section down below. What was your favorite part of the episode? What didn't you like too much? Just leave all of your general opinions down there in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later guys. Goodbye.